What's going on everybody? Today we are back working on Bertha, my 2007 GMC Yukon SLT. So what we're going to be doing today is going to be rectifying a problem that I have when I tow. And really it's not even when I'm towing, but it's mostly apparent when I'm towing. So when I'm towing my trailer, uh, if I go any faster than about 70, 72, 73, I cannot keep my transmission temps below 200 degrees. If I run 75 or higher, it's reaching 211, 212. I've seen it as high as 230 when it was 90 degrees and it was like 70% humidity. It went up to 230 degrees, which I do not like. Uh, on my Yukon, I do not have the heavy duty towing package. I believe if your Tahoe or Yukon has the heavy duty towing package, it, it comes with a external transmission cooler. On the regular versions, it comes with a transmission cooler, but it is built into the radiator. So what I want to do today is install a aftermarket transmission cooler. I got this off of Amazon. It was like $70 for the kit. Now one thing to be known about this kit from the reviews is that the transmission cooler hose that comes with it evidently is trash. I read I think maybe five reviews of people who use the included transmission hose and they say that it bursts. I think two of them said that uh, basically it burst, they didn't know it burst, all the transmission fluid came out of the transmission, destroyed the transmission. So me, I much rather spend, I believe it was $20 for this Gates uh, transmission hose. Uh, Gates number 802-7357. I believe it was $20. And I think it's four feet of hose, which hopefully will be long enough. Outside of the transmission hose and the transmission adapter, everything else you see here was included in the kit. So you have the brackets. You have uh, four nuts and bolts. You have six uh, worm clamps and four screws. And it came with these two adapters, which fit the 3 8 hose. And it came with these four other adapters. On these, I'm going to put some thread tape so that way I don't have to worry about anything uh, coming in contact with the transmission fluid and possibly getting into the fluid and damaging the transmission. But this is everything that it comes with. So if you're doing it on a 07 to 14, you will need this adapter, which is the output from the internal transmission cooler. Outs like I said, again, outside of buying this kit, you will need an adapter, and I will get this Gates hose and disregard that trash there. So to get started. Uh, on the Yukon you need to remove the grill so you have these bolts up here you got one two three four five and then it would be a six one if mine didn't break off six bolts this comes off and then you have tabs that goes around the grill that you will need to remove and then from there we should have all the access we need to get the transmission cooler mounted up so once I get this all off opens up all that space so on this aftermarket grill, uh, it had a push clip there. The push clip there broke. The push clip there broke, 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 and it's there. Uh, I did forget that it does have two screws that goes into those lower points there. And you can't really tell, but that is the hole for the screw and the hole for the screw now let's mock up and let's see exactly where this transmission cooler is going to go
so as you saw we drilled the holes in the radiator support and then we cut down the brackets beveled the edges and got them bolted on to the transmission cooler itself so now let's get this bolted in i'm sure you can see this a little has changed and that now the barbs are up instead of down with one this long on this specific truck uh the bend was not going to make it so the only way to do it was to face the barbs up from my googling it does not matter if the barbs are up down left or right so we shall see if that is true um so it seems like with the grill on it'll be just enough bend radius to go and keep it below this point here so we should be good to go uh so next i am going to get this line off right here because this will be the output so basically it will run from the output to one side and then it will come out and go back into this line here so i don't know if i can record how i'm going to get that out but i will try so for the transmission line i removed the overflow hose to make it a little bit easier to get to and then you can see the transmission line right here that black piece right here is just a cover so you want to take that piece and just slide it out the way and then you have that clip that's on there with that clip i'm gonna take my my pick and i'm gonna need both hands for this because i don't want the clip to fly away to never find it again so i'm gonna take my pick get it on the edge of that clip just kind of take it out all right i got my pick under oh shoot i did all right i got my pick under it and hopefully oh don't drop it all right i got it so this is what holds the barb into the cooler and with that off this should just should just slide out I think I thought it was just slide out get it out that bracket Oh, there we go all right that is out so then the adapter will go in like so the clip with the hump goes up top all right the clip is back on make sure everything is seated so it'll run through the internal radiator out into the external and then it'll run to the so the cooler uh fluid will run back into the transmission so i got the first line connected so this line is going to be the the, the internal transmission cooler out to the top so that was all of my four feet so now i need to go to the auto parts store and get a 3 8 line i'll probably get another four feet and then that's going to run from the outlet to the return line to the transmission so i'll be back and then what i'm probably going to end up doing for the bottom mounts to keep it from moving is that since there's really no good way to make a bracket for this or at least a simple bracket i'm probably just, i have some uh some metal zip ties i think i still got some more metal zip ties and i'm just going to zip tie it to the bottom support and then that should be good enough just got back from the store four feet of hose eight dollars a foot that is absolutely crazy so what i'm going to go do now is like i said before going to run it from this hose on the trans cooler 
to the hose that goes to the transmission and I'll have to figure out the routing for this and if it does stay this way I'm gonna have to put a barrier between uh, the hose and the aluminum because that rubbing will rub a hole a hole in the hose and that's not what we want so I'll be back once I get this all figured out and then uh, we'll give it a start and make sure nothing leaks and as of right now everything is connected so they say don't add any transmission fluid until after it runs for a little bit and it seems like the consensus is after it runs people add about half a quart to a quart over about you know three four hundred miles so they say initially do not pre-seal anything just install everything dry and then check it uh every 50 60 miles or so and just kind of add as needed until the system gets plumbed all the way through. So I'm gonna check all my connections. Uh, I'm gonna zip tie the bottom and then we're gonna start it up and we're gonna check for any potential leaks. Let's give a uh, big Bertha a start and let's see what leaks. I hope nothing. All right, let's see what happens here. I don't know how long it's going to take for the fluid to start running through. Uh oh, I see the line moving. So this might be something going on. I don't see nothing leaking. But I did see the line move. Everything is dry right now. That's probably the worst part after doing the install. Is making sure everything is working as it should before you do too much driving on it. I feel like everything is dry. The wetness you see is from the antifreeze from uh, when I took the line off. But everything from the transmission hookup is dry. So I'm going to let this come up to temp. And then I'm going to check the transmission fluid. Um, I do have AC Delco transmission fluid. Where is it at? Up here? Cause this is what I used when I did the transmission fluid on my Mazda. I think I have almost. Yep. Yeah. So this is what I use on my Mazda, but I used it with some uh, with some additive. So I'm gonna let it run, come up to temp, give it a check, and see if I need to add any transmission fluid to it. But as of right now, which is still early, everything is still dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my zip ties to the bottom to secure the bottom. And then hopefully this will stay leak free. So let's see where the where the level sits on the dipstick. So we're gonna wipe it off and then throw it back in there. And let's see where it sits. Right now it's showing really really low. So I'm 
not going to add a lot. I'm going to start there. I don't know how much that was. Take it for a drive, run it through the gears, and then come back and check it again. Get in there. Get in there. So, but yeah, that's basically, that's basically it. So you just want to drive it, check the, uh, the transmission fluid level, drive it, check it, and just make sure that it is enough. And just every now and again, uh, especially in the beginning, you just want to check it and make sure that you don't have any leaks and everything. And like I said, I'm going to put uh, a barrier in between there and there. So that way it doesn't just keep rubbing. And like I said, and fray, and then take your transmission all to pieces. So yeah, just keep an eye on everything. And like I said, if you want to install a transmission cooler on your 2014 or 2017 GMC Yukon, because I haven't seen any videos specific to the Yukon, this is how you can do it. So I'm going to drive it. So the video is not over yet. I'm going to drive it for a little bit and I'll probably give an update on this video in a week or two uh, on the transmission tip differences so y'all can know how much to expect to drive. So just under regular driving, just people, luggage in the car, running 80, it will get to 200 and stay there. Uh, I have a 6x12 trailer and if I have me and my buddies, a uh, Honda Ford EX is on there. I can't run any faster than like 70, 71, 72 uh, for it to stay at 200. If I do 75, it's going to 212, 211. If it's a lot of appeals, it'll go 215. Uh, so hopefully on this video, I will have some updated temperatures so y'all can see about how much uh, y'all can uh, look forward to drop if it drops any. So this is not the end, but the end should be coming up shortly. All right, so we just got back from Rotten at Busco. It's like 111 miles there, 111 miles back, something like that. I was running 80 miles per hour. 80 miles per hour cruise control. It was about 80 degrees outside. The trans temperature never went above 153. Now before running 70, 73, it would be at 211, 212. Running 80 cruise control for like 50 miles, it would not go over 153 degrees. So online says the ultimate the um that the best trans temp should be about 175 so i feel like i installed too big of a transmission cooler and we're going to see as it cools down and winter time come if my trans temp even comes up above 130. i feel like 150 might be a safe zone but it might also be a little too cool uh so maybe we'll see next year if i need to find one half the size but it definitely brought the temps down 50 to 60 degrees, which in my case might be a little bit too low. So we'll see in the winter time if it actually comes up to temp. But I feel like 120, 130 is probably too cool. Uh, but I need to do more research about the damage that it may cause by the transmission temp not getting warm enough versus the trans temp getting too hot and burning the trans fluid and burning the transmission out. So we'll see how it goes over the winter and if it doesn't come up to temp i might have to just go to a smaller trans cooler so we'll see how it goes but like i said it was my yukon 12 foot trailer and two honda 400s running 80 never went above 153. it would hit 153 and then it would go down to 149. 153 149 so it wouldn't stay 153 for long at all so if you tow heavy and long and you're having issues with your trans temperature on your NNBS or your 20, 2007 to 2014 Yukon Tahoe Suburban Escalade and you don't have the heavy duty towing package which comes with a small uh, transmission cooler, this is how you add one. Uh, but I will probably go to one more of the size of the OEM one because that seems that is probably perfect. So, like everything you do, think, build, enjoy. Peace.